keeping rock and roll mm -hmm. in New York City alive. He really is. I, I mean, somebody's I mean, got like, to do it. Everybody else has abandoned ship. He's present company included. He, he's doing. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Adult Desires is dope, dude. Thanks, man. No, I just mean like you know, I left the neighborhood. Oh, you. Oh, yeah, you yeah. left New York. Yeah. But you're keeping rock and roll alive. I mean, I have no choice. It's just... I know. <laughs> it's just, you don't. You're a cosmic freak. Yeah, it's just deep up in there. It is deep up in there. And you're subversive. Thank you. That's one of the things I love about you. Thank you. I love how unusual you are. Um, you're one of the unusual ones. And there's know, only like four of them. I just feel like once you get a taste of it, if you're like wired for unuse... Unusual? Yeah. That uh, that kind of once you once once that tone gets rung, like for me, it was yeah. probably it was when I was a kid. It's just like, oh, well, obviously this is this is the fun stuff. Yeah, this is the playpen. Yeah, but do you, do you think it's even a choice? No, no. But I think everybody's got that in them. It's just like you kind of have to stumble into the weird zone. Yeah. That that like uh, is the same shape as your. I think need? some of us are painted with a freaky brush. And yeah, just well, nothing you we certainly can, are. I think I have a. I think I have that too. I yeah. think we have that in common. Yeah, Where totally. It's a, it's a different variety of freaky yeah. brush, but it's a freaky brush just. The well, same. I was saying to you yesterday. That's yeah. why I, I love. I I love your um your Insta thing with you just walking around. Like I don't know if you're making up songs or if there's songs that you have, but I'm like, this is good. This yeah. is how things need to get made now. Yeah. But uh, we played some shows together. Yeah, a lot at the Knitting Factory. Yeah, right? were you a doing paint? Was it when you were doing paintings live? Was I already? Doing I don't know. That? I don't know if you were doing the paintings live, but there were paintings. Mm, the yeah. Year was that? I don't the know. Nineties. Yeah, it's like sort of a blur. It's I, like a nocturnal blur. Yeah, I think I opened up for you or something. Maybe. Or I think that's what it was. I felt, I felt like we played a few shows, but I, I the can't remember. Knitting Factory, I think. Yeah. Somehow. But yeah, the nineties. I don't, yeah, I have this book called My 90s. Yeah. That's the first, that's the original Instagram. Yeah, exactly. As the Vanity Fair Pol article. Polaroids. Uh, astutely put it. Wait, I want to show you this picture of this corner because I used to live on A between, uh, uh, sorry, on 10th between A and B for years and years and years. Did you know Nina Hellman? She was in the band Cake Like. Do you remember Cake Like? Yeah. And we had this beautiful apartment right around here, and so I used to take a lot of Polaroids in there. And and, you, and those and you would would were they mainly uh, were they a lot double exposures or yeah and double expo double and exposures and also um, just uh, no flash so so it would just oversaturate and blur which was kind of how you know speaking of playing shows together at the Knitting Factory so there's the that's the view from the roof. All right. Yeah. Oh, that's right cool. here on the corner. Right here. Yeah. There's some other ones the in there too. Here, I'll show you a better one. There's a better one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Who's putting that book out? I did. Oh yeah? Yeah, my wife and I. That's great. We have a company called Tough Lover. And we sort of just put out whatever we want. Where did you come up with that name? Well, it's an interesting story. My first ayahuasca journey. Uh-oh. <laughs> you just, here, here you just, just speaking of slipping in the weird zone. Um, I, uh, among, among... Well, it took four minutes. Yeah, I know, exactly. I was like, all right, let's jump to the end, I guess. Um, among ancestral visitations and lots of, you know, deep sort of working out of... Wait, um, ancestral visitations? Yeah, I mean, there was a lot... the ayahuasca thing? Yeah, yeah, but, but hilariously, what I came away with like there was a lot of profound, beautiful, familial, ancestral, and relationship stuff that first time, <coughs> but also I kept getting um, T-shirt designs in my own scrawl. That's cool. Uh, of all the women in my life. Interesting. And on top, in this sort of lame uh, script, it just said "tough lover, tough lover, tough lover." So it was like my mom, my wife. I mean, beautiful people, women who I love, but who are like motherfuckers, uh -huh. right? Yeah. And um, and I came out of that, and of course there was all this, you know, beautiful, whatever. And I was like, I guess I got to start making T-shirts now, <laughs> tough and lover T-shirts. Did you start doing that? Um, I did. I mean, I didn't. I didn't. I, I I drew them. I never released them. 
That's cool. Yeah. And Actually, so, it's and so, so funny. I just bought a bunch of T-shirts from Target, and I was uh, intending on like drawing on them and trying to like you oh know, do it, sell do them it. on the internet or something. Draw like that. the women in your life. You can the Tough Lover logo is not. Um, no, I won't. Exclusive. I won't. I'll, I'll do something. No, I'm else. saying it's not exclusive. Oh, okay. So everybody has that experience. Yeah. But so my wife. I've never and taken. I, I I'm, I've never taken ayahuasca, but I've done ibogaine. Really. Yeah. Was that which um, is wild? Was. Ibogaine to help with other things? Yeah, it was to like deal with addiction issues. And how did it work? Um it I think it helped, but um you know, I fell back into addiction issues mm -hmm. post Ibogaine. Got it. I I I've really like knocked out a lot of my addiction issues like seriously ever since I started like eliminating toxic people from my life. Sure. That was like the key for but me. how did you do that like like was Ooh. it conscientious or uh, just sort of natural like uh uh, uh it was uh, byproduct of growing up it was it was uh, it, it like what happened was i got into a really really to like there was definitely toxic aspects to a, a bunch of my relationships mm -hmm. but then uh you know and me included i'm not an innocent in any mm -hmm. of it but um but then I got into a seriously toxic relationship and, and it broke me all the way down. And then I started Googling like what is happening. Yeah. And then I ran across MPD abuse and then it What's MPD it, narcissistic personality oh, disorder yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, abuse. And then that opened up a whole can of worms. And then I started doing things like set, practicing setting boundaries yeah. with people yeah. and then that had a whole domino effect and then some outlandish behavior came at me and then it, and then I went through a period of like isolation and wildness for a couple of years mm -hmm. and then wildness. slowly rebuilt my wildness meaning I was like in a you know I I I've, I've gone no contact for my family of origin and all kinds of like real heavy heavy mm -hmm. heavy heavy duty and where are they stuff. where are you from Ohio wait me too oh yeah where are you from Akron Cleveland nice <laughs> <laughs> but maybe that's why we're freaks totally the we're, Ohio we're, we're, we're the, escapees. <laughs> the Ohio freaky freaks. Yeah, the, yeah. The Ohio freaky freaks. There are a lot of them. There's a good oh, long man. history. There's a toilet yeah. paper roll of Yeah, yeah. We Ohio weirdos. Lake Erie Water. Yeah, Patrick Carney just put drums on one of my new songs. Oh nice. New album. Yeah. When's Speaking it when's of it coming the Ohio out? Freaky Freaks. Uh October. Good. Yeah. Who's putting it out? We're doing it. Um my uh manager and I are reopening my my own label. Nice. That's yeah, great. we just decided like I uh, I just put out an album with Peter Buck called Arthur Buck and that went out on New West cool. and that was cool but yeah. we decided like hey let's just do our own you know that's we, great we can do it yep who put out who's putting out adult or who put out Adult Desires Tough Lover Tough Lover yeah. so your own label uh -huh. oh great I was doing sort of one offs with indies for a little while yeah and I I just felt like I'd rather only have myself to blame yeah well that's it I mean. It's all about, I think it's all about self startup, like even doing like this podcast yeah. and just like, you know, making your own platforms yeah. and, you know, getting banned from it your just, own platforms. It just feels good. Yeah, getting banned. Yeah. You get to get banned from <laughs> like the official banned. ones and then yeah. make your own in, yeah. in rebellion. I'm actually starting a podcast of uh, last night, the sort of vocal improv. Mm -hmm. the vocal looping improvisation bookends yeah, of yeah. the show. I'm starting a podcast of those called Sabbath Sessions. So just wait, like vocal loops. It's just these, it's just these sort of, I don't even know. I don't, I don't know what to call them. Yeah, like vocal. Freestyle. Yeah, freestyle. Yeah, it's like chanting, free music. That's cool. Or well, like healing. Like Holly Miranda was talking about healing sounds and I, healing ohms, and we were doing, to, we were doing some of that stuff. I was trying to get in touch with her actually because I I saw on her, I don't know, some feed or yeah. other that she was in San Francisco, like learning about that. And I sort of feel like, as as has always been the case, I kind of go blind into the woods yeah. with something that feels good, yeah. like, like music, not having any clue what I'm doing, and mm -hmm. eventually um, retroactively trying to figure it out. I think you really have a lot of clues about what you're doing. Thank you. When Thank I listen to much. your music, it sounds like 
some Freddie Mercury type shit. Oh, that's for me. that's a that's a huge compliment. It is, you. yeah, and it's meant to be, and it's real though, because it does sound like that. Thank like you. when I hear like "Shudder to Think" or even your new, and then there's a great through line between that stuff and the new stuff to me that Thank makes you. total sense. That's great. I think because I because I, I, I heard that on the Vanity Fair article yeah. or whatever. I think, or maybe I was reading it somewhere else about you, but where you wanted your fans to think of it as a through line. It just all it's feels very like one gesture, right? It very I mean, like, obviously is. The the to me the the big difference is obviously Shutter to Thinks like the you know we were so, we were hardcore heavy, like heavy guitar. It was but like to me thing. that is like I could wear this or I could put on a t shirt and to me that's the difference between hard edged rock yeah. or acoustic because yeah. the still vocal Jeff and the yeah, yeah yeah or yeah Craig Webber but it, but it, but it's case. the same thing, but it's the same thing uh, it's the same thing between say medium media mediums like mm-hmm. your music and your paintings mm-hmm. it they feel like you yeah. and that's usually the sign of like somebody coming from from uh from an having no choice <laughs> yeah well yeah but uh, let me finish the thing i was saying about uh the whole addiction thing yeah. too because i, I want to finish that point which was the reason why i overcame addiction or thus thus far seemingly have overcome it Mm -hmm. because it's not really a struggle anymore Mm -hmm. is because i realized that i that i really wanted to be on my own side and there was no other kind of voices inside of me like pretending to be Mm self-destructive that might have been coming from outside Mm -hmm. like you have to be very careful about what kind of voices are whispering in your ear uh, i find i have a uh, yes of course especially and, and if you're if you're uh, an artist there's a there's a kind of vulnerability or openness or, st- or uh, sensitivity is maybe too precious a word yeah to uh external wavelengths mm-hmm. it's important yeah but the boundaries and filters become yeah. in- equally important if you want to like live and grow and it's helpful to understand the dark aspects of human nature to also understand that there might be um, so vampires. There might be vampires out there, and there, and that's that's really good information to know because yeah. then you go like, oh, really? Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. There's some vampires out here. Oh, okay, really? Because that gives you the eye of the tiger. Mm-hmm. Then you're like, oh, I'm, you know. Well, and what's and, strange and, about it? What's strange about e- evil? Mm-hmm. Is um it yeah. it never appears evil. Oh yeah. Like, people people aren't generally oh, consciously no. or overt like vampires aren't coming out looking like Nosferatu. Oh hell no. They just no. look like your girlfriend. Oh no, the or, best smear you know. campaign in the world is here's the best smear p- campaign in the world. Ehud. I'm really kind of worried about Craig. Right. I'm, really? Uh, really? Like Ehud, what's going I, What did you hear? I'm just, you know, I'm just so concerned about Craig Ehud. Yeah, yeah, what's he's going been, on with he's, him? He's really been, you know, I'm just really worried. Yeah, no, tell I don't. Me, tell me the I, stuff. I, 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 I don't stuff. mean to be like, <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm concerned. Yeah, yeah this is like personal <laughs> That's concern. That's like the greatest <laughs> smear campaign ever. Like, it's, it doesn't come off like, man, Craig's a jerk. You yeah, know, that's it's like not the, evil. It's like the missile launch. You're no, like, where, where like, are these tentacles coming from? <laughs> so many, it's like octopi. Yeah. And if you don't operate that way, and if you've been groomed a certain way, you're absolutely blind to it. You just are, because, you know, especially artists, too, like, a lot of times, we just get our fulfillment just by making stuff, and and kind of that fulfills us, but not everybody has those gifts and yeah. that and that blessing yeah. or they don't allow themselves to. Yeah. And I don't buy that peop- that there's anything uh, such thing as a not creative person. Sure. Everybody's creative. Yeah. Just some people are using their creativity for darkness. Well, and but also it goes back to what we were talking about before where you know, we are fortunate enough that we sort of stumbled into the into the bullseye where 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 we sort of recognize ourselves in our work or or that that um, that uh, 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 true tone, you know, uh, the, when you ring the bell and the tone is true and it's not dull and it's not squeaky. Yeah. But, uh, but I mean, who knows? You know, there are all sorts of people that I know, people, brilliant people, who just never quite found their groove or their lane or yeah. their voice. Right. It's not that they don't have it. It's just that they were not as fortunate, maybe, as we were. Yeah. To, like, find this thing that, that we could frankly obsess over for a lifetime and yeah. enjoy 
and then f- and then sort of stumble into some kind of success that yeah, yeah, enabled yeah, us yeah, to yeah, keep yeah, going. Yeah, enough as well. to be able to be sitting in the basement of of Coney Island, Island baby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true. So what? Ha- so have you done the um, ayahuasca kind of situation a lot, or? Yeah, I mean, I would say for like the last seven years, I've been doing that work. It feels kind of like, you know, adult. It feels like an extension of therapy, or mm-hmm. rest, exercise, diet, yeah. meditation, uh, uh, medicinal plants. Yeah. Um, it, it's hardcore. <laughs> it, <laughs> it's yeah. really, it's not um, for the faint hearted, but, but no. by the time I got into it, I was sort of done. I never had addiction issues, but, but, I, but I've always been attracted to, um, um, di- disorientation, I guess, like uh-huh. like altered states of consciousness. Yeah, and um, and after a certain point, it became important to me. I'm not sure if it's a chicken and egg question whether I was it was it consciously became more important to me, particularly um, after I became a parent to. Uh, make it a little bit more ritualized contextualized and less um careless Spor- carefree sporadic, yeah. yeah less of a party I more, just, more of a more of a seance the, yeah yeah exactly it, it was sort of ceremony. diminishing sort of diminishing returns i mean music mm. what about microdosing or any of that kind of thing i've i've experimented with microdosing too yeah, i that's found helpful i've found sometimes. psilocybin to be really really great connects I mean, you to your heart hundred percent to me and to my heart and just to like a sort of more lateral way of thinking, especially cause I do a lot of, um, my bread and butter is, is, um, composing for film and TV. Yeah. And it's, the parameters are very, very strict. Right. And mm-hmm. there's a lot, it's a business and there are a lot of rules and there are a lot of meetings of and there are a lot of phone calls and a lot of notes. Yeah. And so, um, it's important to me to stay to maintain access to that sort of lateral thinking is the best way I can describe it. Um, that has always informed my favorite states of flow or just music making or writing in general where, Mm -hmm. where, um, where I might be looking directly at the, at the, I might be staring directly at the skull, but the information about what uh, the the interpretation information is coming from my periphery where I'm not quite focused. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't. Uh, this doesn't make total sense. But whatever, it doesn't matter. Slightly um, complicated. So it's like so it's like you know when you when you're working on something if you stare at it mm-hmm. too directly or too intently mm-hmm. it can lose. It right. Can lose I know what focus you mean. Yeah, in a yeah, weird yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. And so the inspiration yeah. kind of comes from the the gray zone of the periphery, as it were. Yeah. Or it's like looking at the word cat, and and, it and loses, then all of a sudden like, it's that? not even a word yeah, yeah, anymore. Yeah. 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 So it's like so. What I like about microdosing sometimes <laughs> is that it it kind of still allows me, even in like during a very um, a very. Uh, rigidly Focused. organized day yeah. where I've got like thing after thing after thing after thing and deadlines and assignments uh-huh. it allows things to still kind of come in through my periphery yeah I don't know yeah it's just a different perspective it is hard to talk about it but it's different perspective it, give, it gives you maybe a different perspective yeah, totally yeah, yeah. It, it loosens the ropes a little bit yeah which is good because they can get pretty like you know I don't know about you but I get stuck in the same old moves and the same old habits and Mm -hmm. I get sick with myself and so it's nice to get a little bit of uh, inspiration information yeah which I think that can help with so uh, on your podcast of of like the sort of soundscapey vocal things yeah. for that, are you going to also speak about them, or is I, it going to be like sonically just sonic texture I'm, podcast? I'm gonna, I think I'm just going to talk for a couple minutes beforehand, uh-huh. be like here because context is so um, uh, context informs the improvisation. Mm-hmm. So and I and I try to when I'm recording them, I I go. So the mic goes into the looper. The yeah. looper goes into a little zoom 
recorder uh -huh. and the zoom recorder it's like four track zoom recorder okay. but then there's also an ambient mic on it so you can hear the environment yeah i always mix the environment in okay. so you know for instance last night yeah. you'd be able to hear the um hooligans yeah the hooligans right? that was singing funny. their chants it was great <laughs> and then you know if i'm in the woods you get to hear the owls or yeah. or whatever and um so i think it's more i'll probably just talk for a couple minutes about like here's what's going on Here's where this took place. Here's when it took place. Here's roughly what was going on in my mind and in my life. Then it's yours to do with what you will. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And then you're releasing it so people can utilize it. Or yeah. I, well, when I when I sort of made up the form or when the form revealed itself, so I'd always it's been a working unique with idea. Things. Thank you. Yeah. Um, it was kind of in response to what we were talking about, which is this like very rigid way of assignment based work right that's in film and tv mm -hmm. um where i gotta fit uh 30 seconds of romance drama heartbreak and isolation into the course of a scene between two actors mm -hmm. um which is super fun but a very different assignment than uh you know writing for oneself yeah a song for a record which also is structural but a different structure you know the sort of verse chorus verse chorus yeah. idea um, I was just fed up with, I just wanted some free music, Yeah. but I didn't really, but I wanted to be a new form of free music. And also, um, I was thinking a lot about when I started doing Sabbath sessions, I call them when I started doing Sabbath sessions, I w it was sort of the death of the old model music business. Mm -hmm. And, uh, when MP3s and piracy and, you know, Napster and whatever else. And I was thinking, uh, what, what happens when music becomes completely decommodified? Because we grew up in an era, in the era of the most... Commodification. Yeah, we just yeah. took it for granted, right? Oh yeah, but, we definitely did. But I guess it's going to come back around, apparently. Well, I guess, I guess people start are... start paying us, people think, are, We'll see about that. We'll see about yeah. that. And so, uh, and so I was like, well, what, what was music originally for? And I was like, oh, right, it was like ritual, religious, it was, it was microdosing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It was a way to kind of, Healing. kind of unhook. Healing. Yeah. That's so interesting, the correlation between... The, what we're talking about and what we were talking about yesterday with Holly, because we were doing, we, you know, we were doing mantras and yeah. stuff like that. Do you do you uh, mess with mantras? Chant? Uh, well, I, when I meditate, I, I meditate and and have a mantra, what, but it's uh, not, but it's not out loud. It, oh, okay, yeah, I because I experiment with a bunch of different ones on YouTube and mm -hmm. whatnot. Ho Pono Pono is one of my favorites. What's that? You know that? What does that mean? Well, that one's just like I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive oh, me. Thank you. It's beautiful. So it's like. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. That's I love perfect. You. I just like saying it just because it clears the energy too. Just even right I love now. you. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Please, please forgive, forgive me. me. Thank, thank you. you. I love, I love you. you. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Please, please forgive, forgive me. me. Thank you. I love, I love you. I'm sorry. Please, please forgive me. Thank you. you. Yeah, and that kind of takes you. So then you take. Uh, you know, it empowers you yeah. because it's a mantra about forgiveness. Yeah, and it's also very, uh, even just then, it's like humbling. Or it's just... Well, sort of, yeah, that's the, just... A, it, you there's, just a, there's a surrender to it. There's so much power in it, yeah. and it's just so simple. Have you ever tried it in the mirror for five minutes? Oh, I should do yeah, that. Try it. Yeah, but I mean, I do I do apply it to myself. I apply it to God. I imagine God saying mm -hmm. it to me. I apply it to the sure. toxic people who I've let go yeah, of, sure. you know, to forgive mm -hmm. and, and understand... I just saw something on Instagram today about like, uh, yeah, forgiveness. You can like forgive the pain beneath the acts, but you don't have to forgive the act. Forgive the a yeah, sure. act. Like that's what forgiveness is: is forgiving the sort of forgiving the essence. Forgiving the essence, and like understanding that you know, if somebody's got a personality disorder, this or that or the other thing, it's not really their choosing. But mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that they didn't do doesn't some despicable that, yeah, garbage, exactly. that, yeah. and and that they would do it again. Like you don't be a dupe. I went with through your forgiveness. Yeah, right, right, and right, that's, and that's sort of forgiving yourself too. Yeah, like and forgive yourself. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Or wait, for being what, a sucker. For be oh, oh well, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, for we all. Are. You, oh, dude! What you were, what you were saying before—it's like you're sort of, <laughs> if you're sort of wired for openness, you know, oh, yeah. and you're accustomed to, mm -hmm. especially if you're a singer, 
and have had any and you're lonely and you're success. needy and you want friends you're accustomed to adoration <laughs> and you were a nerd at and school and approval exactly <laughs> and i remember after shutter i hope Think craig up, likes me <laughs> yeah i mean i still have that but i'm but yeah. i but i just love that part of me now i'm like oh mm-hmm. sweetie you know you're not yeah you're you're no longer allowed to steer the ship but like i love yeah. you <laughs> you know what like I mean? that inner, do you talk to your inner child and stuff oh yeah like that? Yeah, yeah for sure and I also, I have a practice like that John I, Bradshaw type stuff. I don't know. I don't from, know who John Bradshaw is. He's like an old school psychologist who wrote books about like embracing your inner child. Uh-huh. Like if you have an obsessive thought, you follow that all the way down to a childhood memory. Mm. You go back as yourself to that inner child and you say, hey, I'm here for you now. It's cool. Yeah. I love you. You can let it go. And the more work you do that way, then all of a sudden that obsessive thought just sort of yeah, yeah, goes yeah, away. Yeah. And it really works. Anyway, sorry. To um, no, that's okay. I have done a little bit of that. I also have a practice that I learned from this radical rabbi in um, Venice, California, named Mordecai, Mordecai Finley. Uh-huh. Um, he's Mordecai. Like, he's like an Irish, ra- Israeli <laughs> rabbi. Mm-hmm. And um, he, he used to do these meditation talks on the east side in Silver Lake. And um, one of my favorite little tricks that I learned from him was when you catch yourself having an obsessive or destructive um, or self-diminishing thought, Mm -hmm. you know, something that you could do like that inner child practice with, um, to call a meeting of all of your uh, sort of like ambassadors like like each aspect of your personality is like a different ambassador from a different country it's like the un Uh right you're like okay everybody but you're the you're the head you're like all right everybody let's just like sit down and have it out who Uh has something to say and uh somebody comes out and you're like well you suck Mm-hmm. You know, uh, oh, the a minister, not who's ambassador. That, who's that no, guy? The, the minister. Uh, so let's say that's the minister of like uh, insecurity. Oh, okay. Right? You you wind up naming them as oh, the voices come out. Mm. So the minister of or, or you sucker, the, the minister of criticism, right? This the could minister, be a Broadway musical, it, by the way. Oh well, I mean, it's, it's that. <laughs> like, let's write that, a Broadway musical about that, this. Isn't inside that Disney out. movie? It's Inside Out. Right? Oh, it already is. Yeah. I didn't see Inside Out. Yeah, yeah. What is that? Well, anyway. There's anger, uh, oh, okay. joy. Uh, uh, sadness? sadness, happiness. Uh, no, there's no happiness. Jo- no, joy, no, it's joy. There's no, 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 no happiness. Oh, there's no, joy. No, no, it's joy. Yeah. No, no, it's Morrissey it's, wrote it's it. Jo- it's joy. There's no yeah. happiness <laughs> anyway. Call Carmen, she'll tell me what they are. It's joy, <laughs> happiness, anger, sadness, and disgust, or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. So, um, yeah, and those are... Despair, despair, the blue one. And so if you take the inside-out model, those are kind of the ministers, right? But then there's you, and you're like, everybody talk. You suck. I Uh I suck, Uh right? The the minister of perfectionism, Mm -hmm. right? Which then, hidden hidden behind the minister of perfectionism, (laughs) is like the minister of, uh, you know, my mom or dad, you know, or my grandpa, or the the minister of, like, of, like, you know, Russian... Jews, you know, whatever it is, like wherever those voices are coming from, yeah. you sort of follow the line back and then everybody sort of has their argument and um, you hear all of these voices out. It turns it into such a, his- you realize how hilarious and ridiculous yeah. your sort of inner monologue is. Right. And it really, in a very sweet way for me anyway, yeah. puts it in perspective and makes it comical and tender. Yeah. And um, everybody's welcome. I'm not trying to like fight the thought. I'm not trying to fight the thing. I just want to hear everybody out. And then I'm like, okay, I, I hear you. I will take your advice and like I'll make a decision on this map. We'll figure it out, uh-huh. you know, but like it's up to me. It's not up to these like crazy uh-huh. hysterical voices. And they shut up. And then everybody feels like they had their say, right? Okay. All the ministers once at once at a certain point, it's like, all right. Has everybody said everything they need to say? Oh, there's quiet. Okay, cool. Thank you. I feel I like I feel like my mind would not cooperate. Like because the mind's incessant and just like it is it's ridiculous. But, I, but that's part of what's fun about it. It's like I mean, yeah. it's almost like a meditation thing of where yeah. you actually separate yourself from the. Well, yeah, it's a form of metacognition, yeah. really. Mm-hmm. Actually, yeah, because. 
Because w- once you apply characters to those voices, then you understand, oh, that's not me. So it's, yeah. an, it's a way of tricking yourself into like metacognition. Yeah. Which is just metacognition. I, I, I do this when I go like, okay, if I'm afraid, I'm like, who's afraid? Yeah. And then I'm like, who's asking who, who's afraid? Mm-hmm. So I just keep up leveling my perspective. Mm-hmm. Until and so there's then, just nothing. And then I'm outside of my thoughts. And yeah. it's like, who's afraid? Who's asking who, who's afraid? Yeah. And then it's like all of a sudden you're like up on high looking down uh-huh, on the whole uh-huh. thing. It's so the it's same, the same it's thing. It's exactly the same thing. Yeah, it's exactly the same thing. Yeah, it's metacognition. Million ways to skin a cat. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's cool. And it's all <laughs> Disney invented it apparently. Disney invented a whole <laughs> lot. <laughs> yeah, you know, I didn't love that movie when it came out, but it just really sticks with I mean, it's really smart the way they organized it. I'd like yeah. to go back and watch it now. What's it's it called? Inside, Inside out. out. Where when did it come out? 6 oh, years a ago. While ago. Oh. Yeah. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Louis Black is the voice of anger. Yeah. Huh. And it's about a girl who's what eight or eleven or something like that. Yeah, well, there's it's funny because there mo- there are videos on YouTube discussing everything that's messed up about that. Yeah, movie. sure, you sure. Watch that. Yeah. How, how I think I read um, some articles yeah. about the things that it sort of got wrong, like that you know the sort of dangers in there's, buying yeah, too hard into Inside Out psychology. I'm not gonna go over them because I don't want to misstate them, but it's it's it goes deep. Yeah, it goes very deep. Yeah, but 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 I was um, I admired the fact that they didn't keep it light. You know, they they went there oh, no, they like went dark, you yeah. know, it's depression and it's it's the sort of um, pre-suicide conversation which oh, is yeah. happening oh, culturally right now, and that's yeah. not traditional Disney territory. So you know, good on them. Disney's yeah. wild. It is wild. Well, it's Did you ever see that documentary on Walt Disney? No. I, it was like super cool because he like basically was like the Jimi Hendrix of animation yeah. with mm-hmm. like Fantasia. He just like blew it up into like <sighs> Fantasia. Mega, I love it. Like mega, mega, like Sergeant Pepper's Lonely yeah. Hearts no, Club I mean, band speaking level of type ayahuasca. of vibes. Right. And then he like just goes, okay, and now I'm hanging out in my like mansion just working on a model train. Yeah. And he like works on this like model train that goes around his whole estate for like years. My my stops doing animation and like for like three something years and Salvador Dali comes and visits and mm-hmm. says this model train is like a crazy work of art and people are like, What what the hell is he doing? And then that becomes Walt Disney World. What's he building in there? It became Walt Disney World. Yeah. So it's like it's just like it's a great uh, I don't know, it's a great microcosm or I don't know metaphor about following a dream yeah. all the way like even as wacky as it might seem yeah. like i'm into model trains for some weird there's a, reason there's a very beautiful keep... disney museum in uh, san francisco in the presidio mm-hmm. um super inspiring interactive <laughs> multimedia a, a, and it 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 sort of traces his life and psychology in in the way that you're talking about right my father-in-law is coincidentally one of the foremost Disney files. Um, Like he's, he's on the, he's on like the bonus extras of Sleeping Beauty 50th anniversary, just talking about like the animators and Walt. And it's very interesting because I grew up, I grew up in a pretty like Midwestern Jewish household. And, you know, we were aware of Disney, but sort of there was a little bit of the vibe of like, eh, he's kind of an anti-Semite. We don't need to like, why, we don't why, need to like extra support that why, dude. Why was he an anti-Semite? Or what was the know. story? What's the it story was just there? The, we it was just the wisdom. Yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to misstate it either. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, he had some uh, Him, you know. He, he had some issues with, he, with Henry, Henry issues Ford, with the Jews. Walt Disney. He wasn't, he wasn't some is, He had some <laughs> issues. He wasn't down with the Jews. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, but but I don't know I I don't know the it's details. It's all in the background somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Like, really? Like you can't like him that much because he did have. His issues. My father-in-law would argue <laughs> otherwise and has, and I'm not armed with yeah. enough facts yeah. to, to so fight him. Yeah. So, <laughs> but but that was the that was the sort of water I was raised uh-huh. on, and and so it wasn't until I started dating my wife. Um, who comes from an Irish Catholic Chicago family and mm-hmm. whose father is like a Disney obsessive mm-hmm. that I started really appreciating like the beauty and the genius of that what whole... What was his actual job? Disney um, was a fan thing for him. Yeah, right? Disney was a fan thing from when he was like nine years old, right? And he grew up in like a poor 
Irish Catholic household in Chicago with like nine siblings. So, I mean, you needed something to escape into and obsess over, and his was movies and Disney. Um, But then he was a conservator at the uh, Chicago Institute for like 35 years, a paintings conservator. So, you know, it all sort of connects. Yeah, Yeah. Uh, makes sense. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Does he still follow Disney movies? Oh, yeah. Well, he's, I is mean, he still an anti Semite? I mean, he hates me. That's all. <laughs> no, he loves me. He loves me. <laughs> I, I turned him. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, what, um, what's like your. What's your health regime, and are you into fasting and everything like that? I've been doing intermittent fasting lately. Yeah. Where I have, I mean, it's it's mild. I have my last bite of food at 8 Mm p.m., and then I don't eat a bite until 10 a.m. the next day. Okay. I feel great, actually. I mean, I had a a massive heart attack. That that is a mild (laughs) intermittent fasting (laughs) regime, by the way. It's mild. but I It's not hardcore. But it's 14 hours a day, and it gives your body time to... Yeah, and what... Yeah, because I wanted... Oh, what about I, between ten and eight? Ten a.m. Between and 8 ten a.m. and eight p.m., I can, I can eat. But I mean, generally speaking, generally speaking, I've been I've been eating pretty healthfully for a long time. I had cancer, and well, in, in that's the what 90s I was getting and, getting and after that because yeah, I was wondering jam. about that. I mean, it's basically veggies, good proteins, low sugar. Um, sugar's only, the poison. Sugar's right? the poison. Sugar's the worst. Uh huh. Yeah, I've been starting to knock that out, and it, it's, I feel it's so cra- much better. I felt so much better when I stopped when <laughs> I stopped eating bread. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and when I, I stopped that. eating sugar, I was like, "Oh my god!" I know that's, that's what, like the whole thing. I'm like a couple weeks into that, by the way. Mm-hmm. I'm just figuring that out. I mean, I still, you know, I dive in sometimes just because sugar tastes so sweet. Well, I noticed you were drinking some wine, not to call you out. No, no, it's that's, cool. That's some I, sugar. I had stopped drinking altogether for a couple of years, and I felt great. But I really love. I come from a family who loves having a drink. Yeah. Um, and I missed it. And I really didn't like the feeling of having to prohibit or inhibit myself yeah. socially. It was sort of like, meh. but, um, but then I had a heart attack after Thanksgiving and, um, and the doctors were all like, you know, you can have a couple of glasses of red wine. I was well, like, it's supposed to be you. good for heart attack, right? So they say, so what, what happened there? How did that happen? Well, um, Everybody's best guess is that a combination of genetics, my mom's side, produces crazy cholesterol. Mm -hmm. I knew my cholesterol was really high, but because I'm otherwise pretty healthy, Mm. exercise, diet, meditation, not a lot of drugs and alcohol. Yeah. It doesn't matter. What's that? It doesn't matter, yeah. Well, yeah, so the genetics were intense, but my doctors were like, look, we need to address the cholesterol issue but you seem really, really healthy, so let's not dive into hardcore statins, is what they're called. You know, like Lipitor and stuff like that, cholesterol yeah. drugs. You'll probably wind up having to go on them eventually, and you'll have to stay on them the rest of your life. So longer we can avoid them, or if we can bring it down using more natural means, Yeah, let's do that. Um, not knowing that my artery was, you know, 99% blocked. That's and wild. So right after Thanksgiving, like literally a couple of days, I woke up at 2 a.m. with just this sensation of pressure. The the image I had was uh, what, what kept like popping pr- into my mind was this radiant fist that was just sort of like opening up in my chest. The radiant fist is the name of your next radiant album. Radiant fist. I did a drawing of it uh-huh. after. That after should be work. that should be a tough lovers T-shirt. Right. I know. The radiant, it's radiant fist. fist. That's right, what it was. Right on your heart. Yeah. Powerful not like anything I'd ever really experienced before. And so I, so I couldn't, it was very disorienting because generally we have a framework for sensations. Mm -hmm. It's like, Oh, this feels kind of like that. Therefore it must or might be this X, but this was, I I just didn't know. It was almost like it was dreamlike in that, in that sense. What'd you do? And so you first like probably like in denial. Okay, this is like some in in indi- indigestion was what I yeah, thought. It was yeah. like oh well, you know, Thanksgiving proximity overindulgence. <coughs> um, I have reflux things, you know, uh-huh. Russian Jew stuff. Right. And um, so I got up and I was like, well, I'll take myself to the bathroom, work it out. Yeah. And immediately kind of dropped to the floor and okay. like drenched in cold sweat. Um, Called nine one one. My wife woke up, put her hand on my chest, uh-huh. uh, 
my wife who's not prone to visions and who's a pretty earthbound healthy skeptic yeah um had a, a a vision or an image of my chest popping out and like these green sharp rocks was she was she immediately intuited that something was very wrong wow. and the image that she had was of these crazy sharp green rocks she sharp immediately called rocks. 911 and the Hollywood Fire Department were there within three minutes. I was uh, at Hollywood Presbyterian, which was the closest. Within 20, three minutes hour. they were there? Yeah. yeah, it was insane. It was it was That's 2 a.m. Sunday. It was miracle, 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 right? So they got there within three minutes. What if they didn't? I mean, the, like, the, what did the doctors with, with say? What I we'd had, the more, yeah, yeah, it would, I probably, was it would, like I probably that? wouldn't be here. Really? I don't know that I would have died. Right. Um, I might have. Uh, certainly the the more time that passes with what I had, um, the kind of exponentially increased risk of permanent heart damage, mm -hmm. um, particularly beyond 90 minutes past the initial uh, symptoms, mm -hmm. right? And so I woke up at 10 after two. I was on the procedure table by like quarter of three wow. at the hospital. That's and crazy. I was like out. By 3:45. So they, my my right coronary was 100% blocked, which is why I had the attack. So they cleared it out. They, they went through my groin. And they just know how to do that right yeah. out right away. They know. Well, I mean, they had to go up there with a camera first and figure out what was going on. Uh -huh. And then once they figured that out, they they put a a stent up in there to keep it open, which is like a wire mesh uh -huh. straw. Yeah. Um, but they only dealt with the emergency. Yeah, I know. I know. They only dealt with the emergency stuff. And they said, look, you've got some other blockage in there, but it's not enough that we need to treat it at this point. Mm -hmm. um, cut to a month and a half ago or two months ago. So this is five or maybe six months after the initial attack. And I was exercising and started seeing stars, having chest pain. Wow. Needed to sit down. It felt like more than just my body getting used to the new stent. Uh -huh. um, I called my doctor. He said, it's probably nothing. Weird shit can happen for a year or so after you get stents, but come in and check they, it out. And they recommend you exercising and everything yeah, like yeah. that. I mean, okay. Yeah. I mean, I had to build up to it. Right. Uh, and I and I downshift when I feel like I'm overexerting. Yeah. Um, I'm but learning how to do that now too. In actually. general, yeah, especially in general. as like yeah. a musician. Yeah, because yeah, I can tend to like, oh, uh, let me push, keep pushing push it. Through. And it's like, nah, let me slow down. Totally. If you're creative, it, yeah. you know, I mean, going for 48 especially, hours, yeah. whatever I'm, it is. You know, I'm 47. I'm up there too. So yeah, it's like, and I'm know. about to turn 50. It's the same thing. Yeah. So I went to the doctor, and he was like, let's just get a, let's just get a CT scan, make sure everything's cool. This was on a Friday, right? Mm -hmm. Like a month and a half ago. Um, Sunday night, you know, you get these automated like medical portal responses. Sunday night, Megan, my wife and I are going to bed and I get a like doot doot doot. It's a uh, it's a uh, Cedar Sinai med portal saying, um, your results are in. Go see your doctor immediately. More stenting required, right? <laughs> Fuck's sake. So that was not a great night's sleep. <laughs> and then Monday... We oh, you didn't... I would have just got up. I like, know, okay, I know. No, we're going now. But it was so late. Sunday right. was like, when are we going to put ourselves in the emergency room? Right, we can't right, put ourselves right. in like so Cedars. wait until the morning. Yeah. Okay. And you don't know if you're going to like get to see your doctor then. Yeah, I guess I could have waited. Shoot you down, whatever. Right. You know. And, and so the next morning went to go see the cardiologist. He's like, okay, so you're not going to die today <laughs> you know so like thanks doc he's like he's like but but we need to get you in there as soon as possible uh -huh. so like they so it was monday they got me in there on wednesday right they went up through my wrist you can see this little dot right there mm -hmm. and they didn't know how many stents i was going to need it turned out my artery was 99 percent blocked and another one was like Eight, over 80% blocked the, the quote unquote widow maker oh, really? and so they put four new stents up in there this was a Wednesday right the next day I played a show in San Diego with Mesthetics the uh -huh. Fugazi guys I was like yeah. I mean I said to the doctor I was like I was like I'm supposed to do a little bit of touring on starting Thursday obviously I don't need to do that should I cancel and he was like it's kind of an outpatient procedure. Like you might feel fine and maybe that music will be wild. like the best thing you can do. Totally up to you. Incredible. It was remarkable. You and did I, that is, that what's is. That? You did the show. Oh yeah. yeah. I, it was the best choice I could have made. I mean, yeah. I was tired, but I was so grateful. 
Yeah. You know, I couldn't use my wrist to play guitar because of the thing. So I just did those Sabbath sessions and it was just like, you know, that's it was, what you it was did. heavenly. That's what you did for the, yeah. for the show. And it was just such, it was just the thing, you know, but, um, you know, now I'm just in this state of, it's like one side of the coin is euphoria. I'm alive. Here we are. Um, yeah, it must be great for perspective. Yes, but then the flip side is I don't know what the fuck's going on inside of my body. Yeah, why I'm about is your to body die doing tonight. that? I yeah. feel like we all, I have those thoughts too. <laughs> totally, it's just this. But, it's just a magnified version. As, as far as genetics, my dad had stints we'll and get your shit checked and out. So did his dad, and my cholesterol is high, and I resisted the medication. Go get it checked forever. out forever. Yeah. And I gave in like a year and a half. What are you ago, taking? The, the, the generic Lipitor yeah, and a uh-huh. baby aspirin. Um, That's great. But my girlfriend is, and my parents are on me. You have a daughter. You have a yeah, 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 yeah. And, yeah. and it eats at you. And you're like, I gotta hate do taking it. pills. And I'm like, I just gave in. Yep. And you got to do it. <sighs> it's do you the, ever? It's a Altacocter Sunday brunch. It's a necessary. Altacocker. Do you ever uh, read any of Doctor Joe Dispenza's work? No, I want to write this down. Though. <laughs> yeah, called "You Are the Placebo." No. That's one of his books. It's great. And also he's got one called Becoming Supernatural. Okay. And what happened to him was he was like a tri- triathlete or something. He was he was running. I think he was actually competing in a triathlon mm-hmm. or was training for one. He got hit by a truck, um, I think on a bike, and uh, broke his back. And they um, brought him in. And uh, he explains this story like the good looking, like, you know doctor came in like the one that you could totally trust you know like that every mother would fall in love with like was like okay you have to get uh surgery and you're you know forever your whole you know motion will be limited or your mobility will be limited but you won't be paralyzed and if you don't do this the chances are you will be paralyzed and you know or you won't survive or whatever i'm paraphrasing the story Mm -hmm. but so he like he said, okay, let me think about it. And the doctor was like, uh, there's no time to think about it. Yeah. We have to do this mm-hmm. now. And he was like, no, I have mm-hmm. to think about it mm-hmm. because I'm an athlete and I yeah. don't want to live my whole life um, not being able to move fully. And the doctor was like, okay. And this, again, was like, you know, the most trustworthy, mm-hmm. good looking young yeah, doctor. Yeah, sure, you sure. Know. The guy. Uh, yeah, the guy. And, uh, so the the next day, the doctor came. Was like, "Well, what did you decide?" And, and he de- uh, he decided, "You know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm opti- I'm going to heal heal myself mm. with my mind." Mm-hmm. And so he started doing this like vi- visualization where mm-hmm. he would rebuild his spine with his mind over piece by piece. And every time he got distracted and and lost his train of thought, he would start again. And he ended up healing himself like within like a crazy amount of like crazy short order. He was like fully mobile and fully like, you know, and it's all in the book. You are the placebo. What's his name again? Dr. Joe Dispenza. And he's really my wife just read this. He's real famous. You know, he's on YouTube. He's got time. I mean, you could even just look him up on YouTube and like watch his lectures if you want to like explore before the book. Um, and I can text you a bunch yeah, of them yeah, or whatever, cool. but um, it's real fascinating and, and it's real heavy into meditation mm-hmm. and just how like you can heal yourself. Yeah. And I, I definitely, when I was going through a lot of that trauma I was talking about yeah. with like family of origin stuff and all that, like over the last few years, I've been incorporating a lot mm-hmm. of that kind of visualization meditation Are stuff. Are you back in touch with your family? No. No, 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 no. But uh, I'm back in touch with myself. Right on. <laughs> back in touch for the first time. <laughs> yeah, back in touch probably. For, yeah, for the first mm-hmm. time. Yeah. Does it change your music? Um. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. Like, uh, I think the new thing I'm getting ready to release is pretty is pretty up there. Mm-hmm. You know. So I'm. Um. But yeah, I, I'm just curious about those kind of things, like, cause. Uh, I don't know. I thought you might be interested in that kind of stuff, just like over because you've overcome so much mm-hmm. with the cancer mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah, and I, I I'm totally interested in it. Yeah, because and cause fasting too, which is like creates yeah, yeah, yeah. At, um, autophagy. You know what autophagy is? No. Autophagy is when you fast. Um, you're like there's old your old like um, 
fucked up cells. Mm -hmm. All of our cells get fucked up and get old. And if you fast, all your healthy cells start consuming all yes, the yes, old right, ones. Right, right, right. Well, so that's your how, body that's starts why, consuming all the dead, the the bad cancer stuff, and all that. That's stuff. why. You, that's why they say fasting is great for cancer. It is really, yeah. really powerful. Uh -huh. And dry fasting too. I did my first dry that's fast, that. which is no water, no food, Ooh, nothing. For how long? I did it for only one day. It's hard. But still, that was hard. Yeah. And I've and I've done like a water fast for seven days, and Whoa. I did a one Were for you only three have water just for water. Days? Yeah, yeah. How'd you feel? Uh, I mean, kind of. It, it, what it does is it puts you into like a real spiritual zone. Uh -huh. it, it, it's kind of a high. So are you, it, so it, are you, it becomes so are you, addictive. Fasting becomes addictive in and of itself because it is a spiritual high. So do you? So are you? And it also sucks. Yeah. Are I you? Mean, go, are you going too. about your basic <laughs> daily activities? Or are you sort of like restricting? Sort of. I mean, sort of and sort of no. Mm -hmm. I, I you like some people just lay around. I, I think that's harder. Mm -hmm. Because you're uh, just I, thinking about it. Yeah, I did, you know, but uh, I, I want to do a longer dry fast. I think it's just real interesting. That's fascinating. Yeah, um, that is real. Like, that's real powerful. It's interesting uh -huh. because your body, like, it starts it starts consuming all the fat, all the dead cells, right. and then your cells create, like, water, too. And, right. it, and like, right. a one day of dry fasting is the equivalent of, like, three days of water fasting. Interesting. And Wait. your skin starts getting all these oils coming uh -huh. out of it, and it just... Uh, you were stem cell production. It produces so many stem cells. Interesting. It's real, real interesting. You were talking about cold showers earlier, too, which yeah. was making me think about um, mitochondria and getting rid of, like, all... Like, they say that if you do like a minute long cold shower every day yeah it gets rid of all of the mitochondria on your skin what's which mitochondria the, the things that age you oh okay good i'm I probably getting that like that that is like the dumb dudes version hey, of I like it dumb dude versions. okay that's i'm all about that but that's basically what <laughs> talk to us that's talk what, to yeah. us you're in the right place okay, okay, <laughs> you've come to the dumb dudes the that's what that's what this, old and a five -year -old. <laughs> that's what this vein hey, i'm glad you made me one year older yeah than exactly you. Wow. very mature <laughs> i'm not sure that's true right. but okay <laughs> we almost called this the dumb dude podcast dumb dude <laughs> Anyway, but Joe, the the dry fasting is it once a week? Is it every other day? Like, cause I, I wanted to try it that so way, but I, just do it I did it once, and then oh, I was. So it's like Yom Kippur once. It's yeah, just the yeah. same. The Jews do it. Yom like, Kippur's once, hard once though. I always found Jews Yom Kippur to be really, really, really hard. The... Yeah, I gave up on that when I was thirteen. Yeah, yeah. I used to cheat. Cheating on Yom Kippur is like the best feeling. I'm, but is it I'm recommended sneaking down to do getting it like once a call. week? The the dry fast. I mean, I What's think that goal? would be. I think that would be super good for anybody. Well, once a I mean, week. I mean, it's hella. Dis it's hella discipline. I mean, right. you know, I, I, you know, that's a lot. It's a lot. It's not easy, but it's definitely super healthy for your body. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a hundred percent sure of that. I mean, for the record, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> <Don't>. <laughs> you know, for the record, I have no medical None knowledge us, whatsoever. Right. <laughs> Just, I, I feel, uh, it FYI, feels rad. FYI, it's my empirical. But, but it does make a whole lot of sense, you know. And and you could tell, yeah, it rejuvenates. It's like a reset for your spirit too. Do you ever listen to or have you ever read um, anything by Mark Hyman? Who's, yeah, it sounds familiar. He's a yeah. um, he's a functional he's sort of a functional medicine guru. He has a podcast called uh, Doctor's Pharmacy F A R M, oh, okay. and he do, he talks a lot about fasting and yeah. and uh, who doesn't have Do Doctor Hyman? I know it's incredible. We all do. This is this is the new world we live in. I know in. it's fun. Hey man, I don't. I'm not mad Where at it. Where do you no, consume neither. podcasts on YouTube or on like? iTunes no, I just or? just whatever you know. Like the I guess it's the iTunes one. Whatever came with my phone. Um, Audible sometimes. I'm mainly on YouTube. Yeah, me too. I'm a, a YouTube obsessive. I, I haven't really, I don't, I haven't, I don't really do YouTube. Oh man, YouTube. I, started, I do in the studio, I guess. YouTube is my jam. Um, I was just listening to Sam Harris's podcast over here. He's my favorite. Oh yeah? Yeah. He He's an favorite? atheist. He is an atheist. Yeah. Are you an atheist? No. I mean, I, I'm I don't not. know. I don't know what I am. Yeah. I'm a believer. I, I mean, I, I am too. I'm a believer. <laughs> no. Then I tore her face. Now I'm a believer. Uh, he's talking Justin Bieber, believer. Yeah, believer. Oh, then I'm yeah, a believer. I'm a believer. Oh. <laughs> yeah, nah, but I, yeah, I'm a believer. Like, what does that mean? Well, it's just, to me, I believe that this is, a, this is created by a creator. Mm -hmm. Like, it doesn't make sense to me that something comes from nothing. Mm-hmm. I, like in the Big Bang is like 
suddenly there was an explosion. Yeah, you're like, huh, what? Like, okay, that's what was science. That? That's there not was some very, material. That's not reasonable. Right. Like, science should at least be reasonable right, right, right. to me. It, like, and There was there, nothing, then there was something, there was something. Nothing, and then there's something. Yeah. It's like, okay, that's fine. Yeah. Maybe that's true, mm-hmm. too. Like, I'm... I'm not saying I know. Mm -hmm. I'm not like one of these people that like knows Mm -hmm. and you're doomed if you don't think what I think at all. Like think whatever you want and I might be wrong. Mm -hmm. But it's just like, (laughs) I don't know. You have to have faith. Even if you're an atheist, that's a a wild kind of faith too. Like in, in to me, that's an, a, a crazy kind of faith. But here's the thing about like, so there's no there's no faithless belief. I, no, there's no faithless belief. Nor you know? do I think atheism it, it, it comes in one comes in one color. It's yeah. like Sam Harris, for instance. This is a very spiritual guy. This is like a, I, see, I don't really know that much about. Yeah, him. yeah. I mean, this is like a meditator and a um, n- conscious. You know, the sort of metaphysicality of consciousness. I mean, uh-huh. this, you he's know, into it's consciousness. not. Yeah. yeah, he's into the mind, and he's into he's, he's into like deep spirituality. Oh, okay. Um, it's just. But he just uh, doesn't think there's a it, creator. It's just more. I, I think it's more. Um, and I certainly don't want to put words in his mouth because I'll. I'm sure I'm getting it wrong, but. Um, it's more that Judeo-Christian God stuff. Yeah, I find that atheists just don't like the Bible, really, yeah. right? Which, uh, I mean, you know, I mean, they're d- d- organized religion organized has a religion lot of problems. General, oh, yeah, that's, that's I, I agree with that. Yeah. I think organized religion does have a whole lot of yeah. problems, but... Uh, it, it, anyway. I wish I wish we could, you know, just kind of strip away the, 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 the rotten meat and, like, keep the good stuff, you know, because there's good... There's good stuff in there, but people, we just seem to run with the bad. Yeah, I just, I hinge my life on prayer and meditation Mm -hmm. and like I do, you know, and that, that just is the, is my engine. Mm -hmm. So I just wouldn't know how people do this any other way. That's just me personally. That's (laughs) since I was a kid, Mm -hmm. like from, from where I came from and everything else, it's just like, that's what I turn to. What do you mean? Like, where you came from? What do you mean? Just in you know, in a some somewhat you know very tumultuous yeah. environment, you know, and and so I went to prayer right away. Sure. And that's just been my wheelhouse. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. I have and, a and sort of so and like music is that yeah, to me same and thing. like and and, th- and me keeping on track and loving life yeah, and uh-huh. going and being in joy yeah, and yeah, yeah. all that is like a celebration with that spirit that I have a connection I, with. I feel like I have a very similar story. You yeah, know? It's so just to like, me, that's it. Like, and, and I can't understand how people do this without mm-hmm. that, but yeah. that's my experience. Sure. And I understand people do do that without this or without or do this without mm-hmm. that. This guy right here. This guy. I, He's like, know. fuck it. I just don't. Yeah. You don't want. I, I, don't, I, I believe in the spirituality of everything, but I just don't. It doesn't happen in my life. Yeah. There's a lot of, maybe my life is dull, um, but there's no. <laughs> no, but it has saying, so much to do I'm with saying, the Joe like, personality. I hear, I hear these stories from Joe a lot because yeah. Joe is all about that, and I never, <laughs> I never get. I, I don't have that experience. Yeah. I don't know what that it feels transcendent like. experience. I don't, I don't know you, that my. You, you, I, you have transcendent I wouldn't even experience, say mine's right? transcendent no, no, or I'm anything. Not tra- just like just, I feel like you have a feelings cre- yeah. that I don't like. Uh, same. I say this story about addiction all the time. Mm-hmm. I don't know. What yeah. that's I don't like. Have, I don't know what that feeling. Yeah, yeah, you sure, want, sure, that sure. Beer or that yeah, joint. Yeah, uh-huh. Well, I it's called a god-sized feel- hole. Andrew. I know, but I don't know what it feels <laughs> like, and I can never relate to it. I could never. I, I don't know what it's. You know, I don't know what. Yeah, it's yeah. Like. yeah. And, and 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 I'm Jewish, quote. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And my girlfriend is like Catholic. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's that argument. Maybe it's in your house too. What is the kid going to be? Yeah, yeah. What is the and, kid? And and in a way. I probably shouldn't be telling the story. Why not? Let's get the um, camera on you, though. Is yeah. that uh, when my daughter was born, um, her parents wanted to baptize like, yeah. my mm-hmm. daughter. Mm-hmm. Now, when my mother heard about that, she almost had a heart attack sure. and just was like, it was... That bummed her because, out. Both, well, my father understood... And uh, my mother was just like, because they were persecuted Jews in Iraq. That, that would have been very, <laughs> very intense like, for my on, Jewish parents. Uh, yeah, like some Jewish, unfortunately, some 
people have the background where they were persecuted sure. for being Jewish, and then to them that if you if you abandon that, it's the end of the world. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. their whole life, they've fought for not this. even abandon, not but, re- like, yeah. but, but like, but but like bend or deviate. Yeah. Right. And I'm not really I'm not a practicing Jew because I grew up in Israel and you're sort of because you're, 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 you're exempt. Too. No, you're sort of. Exempt yeah, I know. I know. You're just I'm from there. I don't do that stuff. Yeah. Like Jews in the States go above and beyond like things I would never like right. consider uh-huh. doing. So they wanted to baptize her. And I sort of like I signed off on it. I was like, fine. But that's where it ends. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want to hear anything. after Yeah. That. Uh-huh. Just don't talk yeah. about Jesus. Right. right. Yeah. Uh, no. But 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 Suzette's it's not about a real the, believer. Is it about the denial of Jesus? No, but she's not a real. But well, her her da- her dad's uh, point to me um, was like, if you don't baptize your daughter, the devil will take her soul. Right. Well, yeah. that's true. I mean, that that's point, a fact. I was like, OK, you want do you want to have this conversation right now? Right. See, so I, anyway, I don't so, believe that, by the way. Right. I, I, like, that's but not, I, I you feel know, like I'm, I'm I don't think the devil's um, going to get your daughter no, if she's not baptized. Not. Like, so, I, but, but the point know. is, like when Carmen, like in, in my mind, ideally, I don't want her to be influenced by either religion. And yeah. I want her. It's not realistic. I want her to make up her own mind mm-hmm. yeah. and know the facts. And you can't expect that from a four-year-old or an eight-year-old yeah. now. And The she, facts as laid and, out in the Bible. Right. Well, and she <laughs> always asked me, what am I? And I was like, Carmen, you could be whatever you yeah. want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about a per- and, and I met your daughter. I love your daughter. Yeah, she's and, beautiful. And in the back of my mind, you met her. In the back yeah. of my mind, I always go back to John Lennon. Uh, and this is like in that, in that is, song. Uh, no, he's like, God I don't believe. Which I don't believe in pain. Beatles. I don't believe in, yeah, don't in believe Yoko. In Jesus, yeah. I just believe in me. Yeah. he says. And that's but he believes in Yoko. Yoko and him. him. But yeah. I'm just saying. But the, I just believe in me. Is that's what I tell Carmen mm-hmm. all the time, and I feel that's what I believe, and I can never. Connect I believe in me, but me spiritual. includes a conscious yes. contact with God. Yeah, like, and, and it's and a it's a highly personal thing. It's like for me, it's highly personal. I was never taken to church or any of that, so for me, it's always just been about this connection. Yeah, yeah. and it doesn't have rules to it. It's not like oh, I, it's not it's not surrounded by any kind. It's of, not dogmatic. It's not dogmatic. It's not so, like you know surrounded by voodoo or anything like that. Like, There's it, a little, it, it's surrounded by a little voodoo. I mean, yeah, but, but my, like the good but voodoo, my own music, voodoo. Yeah, my, yeah, yeah, my own voodoo. Like I got these decks of uh, yeah, I noticed like those. these decks of cards actually. And what's funny is I went into this Eastern bookstore. Wait, don't read it okay, yet because okay. I want you to pick one. Okay, great. I got these out here for awesome. a reason. Yeah, so I, I I went to this Eastern bookstore yesterday. What's interesting is one's a dragon deck. What, where are these decks? Uh. One's so it's, yeah, you can pick which deck. I, I've never even actually looked at either of these, but one's Dragon Oracle cards, mm-hmm. and Ooh. the other one is Life Purpose Oracle. Ooh, nice! Cards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I asked the What's girl, the I don't know. I asked the girl like, which are these good? And she was like, Oh yeah, the Dragon one's really good. And she goes, And this this lady just uh, turned Christian and discontinued all of her cards and doesn't believe in them anymore doreen virtue she what a name doreen virtue got into christ and decided that this stuff was that's what he now. that's what he does to people man. I, see, I, he doesn't it. do that to me me, me neither he doesn't do that so he's got I, no I, hold I, I bought the decks anyway see? have you ever have you ever used and i animal... bought a bought a, uh, what is it bought a gavita or uh Bhag- bhagavad gita yeah that one have I you bought ever that, so. have you ever used animal spirit cards yes I love that deck. I love that deck, too. Yeah. So, um, which deck would you want to pick from? Life Purpose or, dra- or one of each? We, I want to do one of each, but let's start with Life Purpose. Okay, so... Uh, Should we shuffle them first? Yeah, I'll shuffle them and we'll see, what, play? <laughs> we'll see what happens. This is exciting. This is exciting. Okay. Let's see what happens. Go for a swim naked in the East River. Okay. I'm going to pick one, too. Heart's Desires. Wow. <laughs> wow. <It's> close to home. <laughs> the angels are supporting, guiding, and protecting you as your dreams become a reality. Thank you, Life Purpose. Wow. I need just like a little bit of extra angel protection right now <laughs> after this year that I've had. That's amazing. Heart's Desires. Yeah. The yeah, angels yeah, yeah. are supporting, guiding, and protecting you as your dreams become a reality. Yeah. 
That's Thank beautiful. You. Yeah. Yeah. Let me take a picture that. of it. I'm yeah, heart's desire. Take a picture of it. You might get to keep that card. Uh-oh, no, my, that's okay. Oh, I'm mine too. is yoga. Oh, yoga. That's uh, great. Which I'm into, and I just did some Ashtanga in Tompkins Square Park today. This morning? This morning, Good yeah. You. Your life is enhanced by yoga, stretching, and exercising. <laughs> it's like, tell like, me something I don't know, I Angel know. Deck. I mean, Angel <laughs> Deck. I feel like you got a better... A- Go ahead, Ahud. Pick one. Come on, bro. Let's get in there. What'd you get? Freedom. See, you are free to do what you choose. Freedom. Believe in me. (laughs) Yoko and you. It's right there. Yeah. Okay. Let's do the dragon. Let's check the dragon deck. I'm so curious about it. The dragon. That that feels like dinner. This feels like dessert, right? Yeah. Well, this this feels like this feels like midnight snack. This this, this is the midnight snack deck right here. All right. Is this fun for people in the podcast? Oh, yeah, they love it. It's fun for us. (laughs) Whip out your decks, people. Join us. And then I have have, um, some questions from a a journalist, an official journalist. Oh. Yeah. That's scary. Gotcha. These are some (laughs) gotcha questions from Jonathan Cohen. Do you know Jonathan Cohen? I do. You know Jonathan Cohen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's got some very good questions for you. So we're gonna get into those after the dragon deck. Okay. <laughs> Too bad you're not here for our helium tank. We got a helium tank coming. Don't, don't, what? Don't reveal it. I've already done it. <laughs> you do? Are you gonna yeah. do a whole episode on helium? That's we're gonna a, like. We're gonna have. Uh, we're gonna helium do G's some. Helium G is gonna be our guest. We're gonna have uh, some helium questions, but go for it, Craig. You should have Mary Timoney on. Oh, is she local? Yeah, I we, think so. Should, or maybe she lives in DC. Her. I think she's in DC. Hooter, pick a, pick a dragon. Ooh. Ooh. What'd you get? Sexy dragon. Air and fire dragon. Expand <laughs> your creative energies. Boom. Harness your creativity, excitement, and enthusiasm. Communicate your passion. That is what I intend to do. Nice. I don't know about this one. Great. I love it. I'm gonna take okay, it mine is this one. Dark blue galactic dragon. <laughs> That's some burning, man. Dragon yeah. vibes. <laughs> Mine goes, helps you listen to the voice of the universe. That's cool. Ignite the codes of your master blueprint. Ooh. Access cosmic wisdom and enter higher service. I love it. Higher Boom. service. That's a good one. Higher service. That is a good one. Yeah, I like higher service. Uh, I'll get this tattooed on my chest. Do it. I get the o- Omega <laughs> Dragon. Harness the divine feminine power of creation. Yeah, baby. Come yeah, on. Yeah, baby. Come on. That's exactly what you it's were saying. It's like a, maybe a little bit lacking and, yeah. you know, a little... Facet. Maybe. You need to dust it off. Hold your vision. Birth the higher consciousness. Oh, that's See? nice. Boom. I like that. Nice. Well, that's you're, like, you're like, you're like, I love it. That's just his personality. I know, no, that's Deep down, he's a mystic. I feel like underneath well, look that. At him. Look at him. Sometimes I wish I had time to be a mystic. Ah, there's that's no perfect. time to be I a love mystic. that. <laughs> I wish I had time yeah. to be a mystic. That, talk about a t-shirt. Too much. Yeah, That's a t-shirt. I wish I had time to be a mystic. Where were you born? Were you born in Israel? No, I was born uh, in the Upper East Side. You were? And my parents moved to Israel when I was a month. But, but you were raised in Israel? Yeah, I was there for 24 years. I'm going to completely gen- generalize and paint with a very broad brush. Uh, he was in the I, Israeli army. When I say that I think Israelis are so fucking practical... Right. And not like caught up in the Michigas of mm-hmm. like you know, spirit, and it's just too yeah. much. Yeah, they, they just too many safety too concerns. On, on too many basis. safety concerns. No, this is why me and him are the dream team because <laughs> mm-hmm. I got yeah, my yeah. head in the Fire clouds and, water, and he's earth like earthbound. Earth earth he's like <laughs> holding it down. Earth and sky. All right, so let's uh, let's get into some Jonathan Cohen cool. questions. Thank you, Jonathan Cohen. Hey, Jonathan Cohen. These are some wonderful questions. All right, looking back, what are your thoughts? on the decision of Shudder to Think signing with Epic. Mm. Could the band have grown creatively as it did on the last two studio albums if it had remained on Discord? I think I think we would have grown creatively no matter what because we were just sort of had that engine. And you. Uh, and, and, still, and me. You're still doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just sort of the trajectory. I wonder, our, our final record uh, on Epic was called 50,000 B.C., and we were definitely responding to that classic um, major label note of, we need a hit, guys. Yeah. Um, and we didn't really know how to write the kind of hit that they wanted, which was literally, when we asked them, we were like, well, wh- so, like, what's a hit? 
Yeah. And they said, you know, closing time. And we were like, oh no, this may not work out as well as we anticipated. Catchy as that song is. Yeah. Um, but we, were, we took the assignment. It was like, yeah, we can make a hit and still be Shudder to Think. And so we tried, but, you know, so, so I don't know that we would have done that record precisely if we were on Discord, but who knows? Um, yeah, yeah. Did you we guys would've... have any kind of hits? Or did... we, had, we, had, we had a couple little sort of minor um, alt radio hits. One called X French T-Shirt, another called Red House. Back to T-Shirts. Back to T-Shirts. Yeah. Were we talking about T-Shirts? Well, your t- Tough Lover T-Shirt. Oh, yeah, yeah Tough Lover T-Shirt. That's right. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah, I think we could have grown. I don't know if we could have supported ourselves. And I, d- and I wonder if we would have wound up go- getting as deeply into film soundtracks as we would have, because we were able to afford to live in New York City. We were um, getting some visibility and support on a higher level than we would have been able to afford if we had stayed on Discord, as much as we love Discord and it feels like home. You know, so I think there was a... a, a a level of profile that Discord might not have. I don't know how to put this because uh, we were getting major label support. Yeah, you know, so we were in the big city. We were on MTV, and that helped us. Um, that gave us a little. That gave us a little bit of visibility and clout, so that we Hell could get yeah. into the next. And thing. Nothing wrong with that. Either. No, 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 nothing I'm wrong not, with I'm that. Not, like I, sure. you know, I'm I'm definitely into uh, what's it called? Just like. Breaking those contracts with like thinking being in somehow impoverished is oh, yeah, cool fuck that. or whatever. Fuck like, that. Yeah, yeah. One yeah, of my yeah. best friends, my first girlfriend, um, when I was twelve to fifteen at, at Jewish summer camp, is now like an insane genius uh life coach. Uh-huh. Um she has her quote unquote method being taught at like MIT and Stanford and NYU and all wow. these rad places, all these rad people. Um, about 15 years ago, we started working together because I was like, all right, pro- I was, I was very skeptical. I was like, okay, life coach, prove it, life coach. Mm-hmm. And she was like, okay. And the first thing she dismantled was the whole like punk ghetto yeah. art, art commerce bullshit aye, aye, aye. that we were raised with. Oh my God. The nineties like blew it up. And I was like, thank you. Ugh. Thank you for blowing that up. Cause it doesn't serve anybody. I wish that got blown up a long I know, time ago. Right? I know we got raised with that wrong. I mean, it went from like Rolling Stones, like Keith Richards, yeah. the, like, you know, like that, what do you call it? Mythology yeah. of like the self-destructive yeah, rock yeah. star into some Kurt Cobain type it's shit. Also, just fucked. and it's just like yeah, and it's like that. You know, now like I'm working with some younger artists yeah. now, and they're all into their. They're on point with their brand. Yeah. They're on point. Oh with my like, god, it's so crazy. It's like it's so yeah. the opposite of I that. Know, Every like they just get it. Well, it also just goes to show what a construction it is. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you you want to um, protect what's sacred. Like you don't right. want to, you don't want to poison it. Yeah, but you don't need to like play it up. No, you don't. You certainly don't need to play up self destruction or, or, or romanticize or self deprivation. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. But so much of that stuff works on an unconscious level underneath. Mm-hmm. Like you make agreements. So many people make agreements to not sort of out like unconscious agreements to not like sort of overcome their their parents' position. Yeah. For mm-hmm. instance, sure. I mean, so many people have to go beyond yeah. that. Anyway. I mean, look, there's so many um, inhibitors, inhibitions, uh, uh, in- inhibiting habits that I have that I'm not aware of, you know, but that's kind of the like fun. Like what? Well, I'm not aware <laughs> I of I know, I was kidding. <laughs> but you, um, on some deep level, you are aware of them. Right, right. You know them. They're just not quite like, they haven't risen quite to conscious level yet. Right. But that's the fun. That's like so the fun puzzle. I was trying to puzzle. trick you into knowing what I know. Yeah. Oh, you mean... I don't wipe my ass. Yeah, you don't. I only use a Japanese toilet. I wish. I'm I still, fo- I'm still working for that Japanese, that, that Japanese toilet. What'd you say? I had a follow up to the. Okay, what is it about a Japanese toilet? No, I don't think I've ever been on a Japanese toilet. I have oh, at, the best. at Mike Mills' house. Is no turning, no turning that back. Heats up? I know yeah, that's major the, label the money thing, right there. That's major that's label. Money. That's some of that <laughs> REM type shit. <laughs> <laughs> type shit. Yeah. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Go for it. What's your follow up? Uh, as far as Epic, what what prompted like what got Epic to notice you guys and want to sign you? Um, Michael Goldstone was our A and R guy, and he had signed Pearl Jam. 
Pearl Jam, I think Ed in particular, was a fan of our final Discord record, Get Your Goat, particularly the song called Pebbles. Mm -hmm. And he started talking us up to Michael, who started showing up at shows. That was that weird moment where you could like get a record contract on the corner of 10th and A. Right. Um, and so, a, you know, sort of... Uh, and. And, and that's a, why Pearl Jam took you out on tour. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of a lot of big bands liked us. We were sort of a band's band. Mm -hmm. um, we were very musical, and we were just musically ambitious and original. Yeah, bands like originality. Yeah, totally. Yeah, other artists like artists that are original. Yeah, that's it. And so, so, so it was good. I mean, we 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 always had it real good. But Michael started showing up at shows, and by his own admission, he at first didn't really get quite what we were doing musically but he saw the way fans were responding like we had really 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 deep fans i think you still do you yeah. still do yeah. Yeah. even at the thing yesterday yeah. they yeah. were there totally and i'm I, for which i am so grateful and yeah. um and always have been and so and and it's interesting you know going out and playing some shows now and doing this photo thing i've been doing um reconnecting with fans not everybody's older and yeah. seeing kind of what everybody turned into yeah. yeah there's some really interesting characters out there yeah um and uh so michael like a good a and r person should connected with the fans connection and he was like oh there, this is this is something if we can cultivate this like uh this this could really be great right um you know and they signed us epic to their credit based on the material that became pony express record which was far and away our most difficult record yeah. least accessible and last follow up. What's that? The yeah. Last follow up. Did <coughs> you guys break up, and that's why there were no albums on Epic, or did Epic drop you? Um, no, we broke up. We broke up. Actually, my contract, and I think maybe even Nathan's contract, with Epic stuck for a little while. Okay. But then we everybody just sort of let that quietly dissipate. Um, no, they they didn't they didn't. I mean, they made it very clear that if we were going to make another record, it was going to be a whole different yeah. ballgame. And by that point, it was like new metal and, you know, it was like corn and tool. And on the on the heavy side, on the heavy weird side, it was like corn and tool. And then on the pop side, it was like boy bands and stuff. So, you know, I, I don't know what we would have done on a major at that well, point. Well, this goes to this one. Does do, do you have any thoughts on to why rock music seems so much less popular with young people now than it did even a decade ago? I don't know. I mean, a decade ago, it was like retrograde, right? It was garage, right? So you had like oh, yeah, white, white stripes. stripes. Black keys. Yeah. Black keys I mean, are coming out with a new thing. Yeah, I know. And, and, and those are some fucking great bands and great records, but it still was like taking an old thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, trap music is fresher it is it's I, just more creative it's more I, psychedelic it's, it's fun. more fun it's i've been working with with some people doing that like uh this artist named grandma and uh -huh. just yeah younger people doing yeah. it and it, it does have this great spirit to it that's like it's more creative yeah it's just where the energy is yeah it's where the it's, it's all the that it is where yeah. the energy is and and um it's where the ideas are you know and whether whatever i i, I I'm always attracted to n new ideas and 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 fresh sounds. Yeah. Just like ooh, it's something that makes my brain tingle, my ears sing tingle. And yeah. guitars don't, you know, you, you gotta be really special to to find a new a new uh, facet. Well, you just have to have music. great songs. You have and to. Have so many people don't have great songs. Yeah. If you're gonna if you're gonna do it on an acoustic guitar. Mm -hmm. It has to be a great song. Yeah, or you need I mean, to be say, or you need to be saying something new with the guitar, which yeah, is tricky. At which this is point. tricky. Honestly, too, though, even if it's trap at this point, because trap isn't really new anymore no. either. So and that everything sounds like that, and that has to be great songs too. It yeah. always just has to be great songs. Yeah. you know, I think it's going to come back around to well, rock so. and roll well, too. I think, anyway, I think all, people people it you, oscillates around. You need to take a break, and then it come, yeah. people come up with a re, fresh sort of recombinant ideas. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Um, I mean, there there's some good guitar music now. It's not popular, right? You know, well, who are some weird. of your favorite new acts? Um, this new Aldous Harding record has really crept under my, you know, like right into the little hole in the back of my skull. 
Um, you have a hole in the back of your skull. Mm, it just your feels like plug. I do. <laughs> yeah, my matrix plug. The matrix. It just feels like that's where things creep in. Yeah. That uh, uh, Autecker put out four records. La- these four like live. I don't know if they were improvised. I have no idea what they were doing, but they're crazy. Last year. Which, Autecker. Yeah, Autecker. I need, I need to get these names and check them out. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't even know. I've never heard of either of these. I really like the last Robin record. It's like a family listen. Just like mm-hmm. great, pop. great pop. You know, yeah. almost like house based pop. I like pop music. Yeah, too. me too. She's back on top. She's pop. amazing. I just love her. She's an artist. She's just like has, is tapped into whatever it is that makes me want to listen. There's a lot of records. I've been listening to a lot of good stuff. Those are the those are the things that come to mind though. Okay, and then. You were one of the first indie rock musicians to transition into film and TV score work. Do you have any tips for musicians who may be attempting to break into the field but don't know where to start? Yeah, find um, find some friends or make some friends who are um, at the same level as you working in other media, which is to say, like, find find a director find a partner find a director partner who's like just getting started out and just start making shit together yeah. find, or a writer or yeah. a cinematographer or whatever that is Absolutely. like find your find your crew yeah that's it like people i think overthink and and by people i mean myself you know over you, you just overthink things yeah, it's like i do start you yeah, know just like start. even with this podcast it's like yeah. we're just starting that's we're all, making this up like we don't know do what it. we're doing we just bought some oracle decks you know and we got a helium tank on the way yeah there you go today ehud said be more aggressive with your own stories like you know and then i'm like okay let me like chime in oh, yeah more. you got good ones you got good ones you know so like because i was just like laying back too much on the first two i guess sure so, well you're like well i'm yeah. the host these are my guests these I, are the featured people but the whole point i mean people listen for the host yeah people want to talk to everybody like you don't listen to howard stern for like you yeah. know yeah, you want to hear everybody. Yeah. yeah, so it's a good, you know, good mix. You got to get a mix. But yeah, so just, I agree with that. Just like... Find your team. Just Yeah, like, you don't have to overthink it. Keep it simple. Yeah. And, and make, and create your, I hear create your own opportunities when you say oh, that. 100%. Like just nobody's cre- coming. So nobody, just go out and do it. Nobody's coming. Yeah. By the way, nobody's yeah. coming. Nobody is coming. Nobody's going to call you to yeah. get it like after you have made your demo. No one's calling. Make, make, Nobody's, your, make your mud pies. It could be Bob Dylan level. No one gives yeah, a fuck. You got to right. get, you got to give a fuck yeah. and you got to yeah, somehow make them give a fuck. I, like, I, I hit, I, <laughs> and, I hit and then, <laughs> and then like chip through that brick wall, brick wall over and over again. Yeah. Um, me too, by the way, too. That's how I know. Yeah. You know, the, the other thing I would say is make sure if you're coming from a band background, because <clears throat> We all start bands and making music as a kind of a fuck you to everybody else's rules, right? Mm -hmm. Like, especially coming from punk, it's like, don't tell us what to do. Right. Well, you better be the kind of personality who likes to be given direction if you're going to go into Into film. Into film. Yeah. Because that's the collaboration. I like it. I love it. I I like it now. I like the combination of the two. I like the combination too. Scored. Something Hell's with Kitchen. Your Moog. You remember that animated movie? I don't remember. What oh, it right, was. right, right, right. Yeah, the it gloaming. Something. It was really wild. Thanks, man. Yeah. I need to get that Moog guitar back in. Moog in. guitar? I have a Moog guitar. Yeah. What? They made a Moog guitar. I need to get the uh, pedal thing. It's great. What is it? Can you describe it? To Lou it, recommended you get Lou, that. Lou, yeah, Lou Reed. Uh, um, he had one, and. Um, oh tell that story where he told you that you, you need to buy this and then we went to Asheville that's right and I went to Asheville and and basically the Moog guitar is uh it's basically like you know what an Ebo is mm-hmm. obviously like so it's like an Ebo on every every string resonates all the time and so it's like it's an Ebo for six strings it's, yeah dude it's in, I've been literally bro it's w- incredible when it's I like I first started getting into Ebos I was like why don't they fucking make these for six strings it's, I want it's, all the strings dude it's in. get it's this this is okay. it it's it and it's beyond that too because it, it you can decide how much uh, there I um you know not to self promote but self promote just the same yeah. like there's on youtube there's a version of me doing shock the monkey shot awesome. by uh, anna gabriel yeah, yeah, peter's yeah, daughter yeah. Mm-hmm. and i'm doing it just with the mo guitar and my voice and you can and that's a real good example of it because it sounds like layered it's cuz also you can have just the guitar sound with the with the underneath thing 
It okay, does all great. This is very out, exciting, it's bro. It's in, it's great. incredible, great. and it and it's yeah. real expensive. And then once and like I got that, it, two thousand dollars. No, no, it's like Space. it was like more. I think I can't remember. It's and I got it thirty five. Yeah, something maybe four something. I don't know, but I got it. And now you probably get one used. I don't know, but they don't make them anymore. Mm -hmm. don't. So now they um, might cost even more. Maybe I I haven't looked it Why up. Why would they stop making something like that? I don't know because it's not a synthesizer it. either. It's yeah, a weird yeah, offshoot, yeah, yeah, like yeah. It, you know. But I texted Lou after I got it, and I was like, uh, "I'm having buyer's remorse from this thing." And he, and he goes, and he just wrote back like, "Why on earth would you? That thing is godly." Mm -hmm. And I just remember he used the word godly too. <laughs> so I was just like, like you know, okay, I'll take it from I'm you. I'm like, you know what? Yeah, and it and it really is. It's a, it's a wonderful instrument for you. It would be incredible. Oh my god, for scoring, so for, for scoring, it's like. I mean that between Such that and your, and your and vocals character, and, it sounds like oh yeah, and then there's also another setting on it where it's very muted. Everything's pizzicato, uh -huh. like it's like the opposite of resonant, yeah, yeah, which yeah. is also very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but yeah, between that and your vocal looping, and also your for your podcast, mm -hmm. you could have a segment with the Mo guitar, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. which would be wonderful. Non vocal, yeah, yeah, rad. I remember that whole trip. That was pretty wild. Yeah, Asheville, and I got the Taurus pedals, and yeah, I had to, uh, yeah. Anyway, so let's see. And is there any unfinished business with Shudder to Think or any cool recordings from the proverbial archive that might be of interest for future release someday? What about just sneeze? Just sneeze. First. The answer to this is a sneeze, Jonathan Cohen. <laughs> yeah. Does that answer your question? Does that answer your <laughs> fucking Cohen. question, Jonathan Cohen? <laughs> <laughs> um, the answer to that is I'm always writing Shudder to Think songs uh, just because that's a style that I is natural to me. Invented. Go on, say it. What's that? Invented. Invented. <laughs> and uh, and uh, so actually the new record that I'm working on started as a bunch of... So, so I got this... I was working on some TV shows and I got a Universal Audio Marshall like JCM plug-in mm -hmm. and the second i plugged my les paul into it it sounded like shudder to think mm -hmm. and so so now you're making something harder edge now well i i don't think it's going to wind up harder edge but that's the way these ideas I'd came like out i'd like to hear it like that that'd be yeah dope. i know it would be fun because it's like also like it's cool to just go back and forth oh. and adult desire is more acoustic yeah like, yeah you know like and, and more solitary too. yeah and then so like to go to, i've been thinking about opening it up to in open band. it up and like fucking rock out with that you know it'd be kind of cool vibes so I sent all these, uh, Not just to push like for that, no, 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 it's okay. I, I'm, I, it's, uh, it's good. It's actually helpful. Yeah. I sent um, some of these sort of scratch ideas and parts to the band, and uh -huh. I was like, guys, these are Shutter to Think. Like the like this is Shutter to Think oh, music. Jonathan like Cohen, he's coming back with it. I was like, I was like, come <laughs> on, like let's do something, and everybody was psyched, but. No, I don't think it's gonna happen. Not Everybody was enough. like, "Yeah, everybody's busy." Aren't everybody's they? busy. Nathan like Nathan's like... in Sweden, yeah. um, Stu's down south, Adam Adam's in LA, Kevin's in New Jersey. I mean, it, it would require some external force to make everybody prioritize it. It would need to be money, or it would yeah. need to be. The other thing I've been thinking about, and so I'm just like, fuck it, I'll just, put, I'll just make these. These will be my next record, and then, um, and, but then the other thing I've been thinking about. So there are a couple of things, a few things in Shutter Think World. So that, but I think it's just going to be a Craig Wedren record. Then um, I want to make a documentary, or do a podcast. Um, I know Shutter Think podcast, <laughs> um, which I feel like is something where everybody could participate and it wouldn't be like a drag on their time or lives and then you could still sneak like get some songs out that way too. yeah you know, to like build something up that's new mm -hmm. which i think would give everybody the enthusiasm and impetus to like mm -hmm. be excited about something new um but so this idea of a documentary or a shutter to think movie would 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 create a framework for some new material this I got all of the um, all of the Discord multi tracks digitized, mm -hmm. and a lot of those records were just mixed poorly. Mm -hmm. um, I really want to remix a lot of those records, maybe even song by song, and just do a song by song podcast. 
which I don't know. I've got all these shudder to think ideas, but I think I'm probably the most enthusiastic about it because you really want to remix the past. Yeah, I do. Some of it. I have some of no it. desire I for totally that. I totally like, get it. Iggy Everyone Pop tried it. to redo Raw Power, was, and it was so, like, and, and put bass on it because you would think, oh, it needs bass. No, yeah, but then it sucked. I had an argument. It's argue, the best I, record I ever without bass. And then with, with, you know. I had an argument with Ian MacKay about exactly this. Yeah, it's like, and he was like, "Fucking, you know, do you steward what happened with raw fucking power. raw power." Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> I'm dude, glad he agrees. He with totally me. agreed, and that was his example. He, I, I yeah. was like, dude, the album's called Raw Power. Yeah, it's not called like. Um, complex, multifaceted song writing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Like the Shutter to Think records are song records. They're yeah. not raw power records. And yeah. they and, and like the the way that we recorded and mixed some of them yeah. don't do the greatest service to the songs that we wrote. I'm we just, just didn't not know how to do it. interested in the past. I'm interested in what's coming up next. I agree with that. I now. don't think they're mutually I'm into exclusive. Now and what's I ne- don't think it's mutually exclusive. Well, how do you mean that? Well, I just mean it's like I'm always working on new stuff. Yeah. But I know like those songs feel very present tense to me you know like i don't feel like oh those songs those don't make any sense like i fucking love those songs yeah I, um, yeah they're great and i don't feel like but they sound great to me too like well maybe so i that, mean that's, it might, the, thing, that's like, the thing it might just be my thing and exactly, people have their own relationships the to them it's fucking with people's memories of them that's why i'm saying that's like it. that's why i'm saying like just go song by song have that too but not with songwriting i think the podcast idea is a really good yeah. one though because I, I i just you know and and i know it's a cliche to start a podcast everyone's got a podcast we're on a podcast talking about podcasts yeah, yeah, right yeah. now but meta, meta meta but what's cool is the podcast is this ongoing form that's right it like feels, a documentary it feels living it feels like breathing. It, it, it closes it and that's yeah, yeah. cool a netflix thing or something like that yeah. and it would blow up the spot for a second but a podcast is ongoing yeah. creative yeah. They can like just keep blossoming. Like, I've had like this idea garden, for for know? many many years about living albums, albums that you like, yeah. you you almost subscribe to, where you're where you're just privy to the process, to the yeah. creative process, which is like what a, in a way, what a podcast is. It's like a yeah. live documentary in a yeah. way. I think but that's, that's why, why they're so great, or that's why people love them so much. That's why I think remixing this stuff song by song and having like a podcast around each song, it keeps it from being too precious or too like yeah. monumental. It's that's like, cool. It's like not dropping an entire record of that's like, cool. this is the way it was meant to yeah. be. It's like, no, here. I agree sure with you then. I in that way it's not that. it's not mutually exclusive. Yeah, it's You're sort of right. like, okay, you know, we're talking about it. Who knows what everybody's memories are around these yeah, and it would be interesting to talk about yeah. them and stuff like that, and then have like, here's the old version, here's the yeah. new version. Which do you like better? Maybe totally. maybe you like the old and version, then just, and like, then fans can like available. chime in and be like, oh, I fucking hate the new version, totally. and then that's fun. And too. fans can chime in and be like, yeah. remix this one next. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's you, true. Which is you fun. You could also go what Trent did, uh, Reznor, where he just gave. I only do it. He gave fans the multi tracks. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. here's like, you guys yeah. mix it. Yeah, I, like I feel that. like that's more interesting with electronic music. Yeah. But it's and rock and roll. Yeah, I mean that's really given people yeah, creative freedom. Totally. Here's the raw materials. Yeah. let's see what you do. Guys what you will come up with. Yeah, yeah that's true. That would be fun. Well, that was the thing I discovered when we digitized this stuff. I was like, oh my god, the the just the basic sounds we recorded are just so much better than the shit that we put on it in like 1989. Where we were like, put more gate on the snare. Yeah, but the, just, I, li- I like I, I like I like it's gate got, on I like character. that nineties gate on that snare. It's got character. You know, like, yeah. It's got charm, and it you know yeah. it, it it puts it in a, a sort of uh, era context. But I don't know. And I just I mean I got so many songs on my hard drive right now that I got to deal with. You yeah, know, I, know. Find, I, I get and it. Find a I get it. For. Well, I mean it's that's like, why that's why this hasn't happened yet is yeah, because you I always too. privilege the new stuff. So on uh, into your photography stuff. So you, so I heard you talk yesterday about they got that film again for your Polaroid, yes, and, so yeah. I, and you got a bunch more. I got of that. a box of it, but it seems like my camera's fucked up, so I got to get a new camera. Well, that'd be I easy, right? Guy, on I eBay or Guy, whatever. Guy, yeah, I can get one on eBay. I think Guy from Fugazi is like hoarding a few of those uh-huh. in, in his house. The cameras, yeah, and I'm sure that, they're like, that's that's who originally gave yeah you the he camera. gave he gave it to me, and I thought maybe I had the memory wrong, and I felt like a little uncomfortable putting it in my book. But he 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 sent me an email last week. He was like, dude, I just got the book. I totally remember that. I was like, oh my god, phew, I didn't make up. That's some cool. Weird. What what like I'm a big Fugazi fan. I've never met any of those guys. Mm. What are those guys They're like? Wonderful, lovely, one, two, as you would three. expect. 
Rapita. Rapita. I fucking love that shit, dude. Me too. I saw them. I saw them at the Masquerade in Atlanta back in the nineties, like for five dollars or something. With them, it's possible. Masquerade was a cool club. Yeah, like three levels, like heaven and hell and all that. It was so, it was so Atlanta. There was so much goth and so much like so much bondage stuff. Spooky. Heaven, hell. Heaven hell, and there was like some freaky S and M vibes yeah, up yeah, in that yeah. place totally. too. Totally, it was Atlanta. No, it was, it the, was but wild, the, but dude. But the shows were great, and the fans were great. Like I always loved Atlanta. They're <laughs> freaks. Oh yeah, I lived there for like four or five years. Yeah, yeah. freaky, freaky. Yeah. The good, good when rap. you toured with Fugazi, were you like huge fans? And like, the, how was that whole experience? Oh yeah, I mean we were, but Fugazi started right around the same time yeah, as as Shudder to Think. So I mean, it, it wasn't. We were sort of contemporaries. Um, I mean, they were Fugazi, and it was like... They were like the biggest... Yeah, in a it way, was like Ian from band. Minor Threat and Guy from Rights of Spring, and Rights of Spring are one of my favorite bands of all time, and mm. Minor Threat are ridiculous. You know, so it was like, oh, Jesus. But also, um, I don't know. I mean, we would also bitch about them. Of course. You know, because you have to. Yeah, you have to if it's your label. Yeah. So uh, what do you like better, L.A. or New York? Be honest. I mean, I don't know. I feel like they're two sides of a coin. You know, I don't okay, really. But which do you like? I don't. I don't prefer. <laughs> for now, like for now, for now, like having a kid and yeah. a family, I like LA. LA. Yeah. I like having a studio in my backyard. Yeah. Um, I love our community. So many of my friends had migrated out to LA. I like so LA like, a lot too. I keep trying to move out yeah. there, but it never takes. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I love it. I mean, but, but I wouldn't want to go out there without a crew. Yeah. You know? Um, I miss New York, but I don't. Uh, I was talking about it with my wife yesterday, and I was like, I don't, I, I don't really want to live here. No. Nah. And she was like, You don't want to live here now, but like when right. we're older, it'll be really fun. Like once the kids. She wants gone. to come back. Yeah. And and she's into film, right? She's into everything. She sort of she's she's been she's been the business side of our business mm-hmm. for the last few she, years. Does she manage you? I guess so. Kinda. I mean, it, she's not really a manager. She more, she more like holds down the fort, That's nuts cool. and bolts of the business stuff. Yeah. Um, and um, it was nice you know, to meet she's, her yesterday. Yeah, she's wonderful. She's and she's a mother, and the, and a, she does all the practical shit. She does all the shit that I've been Call too. Call nine one one for you. She calls nine one one. She Has recognizes that about I'm having a heart gr- attack. Green arrows coming out of your she heart. She does all the stuff um, that she's like the earth to my sky. That's beautiful. Yeah. Um, we're very complimentary, I think, in that way. And she's a tough lover. And she's a tough lover. So she she's doesn't hate it. I mean, my, my thing, my thing. She's a tough lover. lover. She'll she take your heart, but you won't be <laughs> Wait, <laughs> like that's... Like no other. <laughs> that's an easy lover. She's not an easy lover. It's the opposite of that's tough Philip lover. That's Be- Philip Bailey. Philip Bailey. How and and uh, Phil Collins. And Phil Collins. How the long films. have you guys been together? 20... We... We got together at my th- um, at my thirtieth birthday party, I'll, but we'd been friends for like seven years before that. Um, so, and I'm turning fifty in August, so it'll be our twentieth anniversary, August fifteenth. Wow, congratulations! Mazel thank you, thank you, thank you. And I and I mean, I this is not bullshit. I literally, never thought it could be possible to just like exponentially love someone more, but I really do. You know, like she's, she's, I don't know. That's she's, wonderful. She's awesome. Yeah. I mean, she'll be a constant puzzle to me, mm-hmm. which is part of what makes it lively. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, what the fuck are you? Who, who, what? You know, but it's the, it's great. That's beautiful. Yeah. Well, on that note. That's a good note, that's right? That's a good note to end it, man. Note. And, uh. I gotta seat. thank you for doing this. Oh man. my god, this was this, so great. It's really this is great, like Sunday man. morning. This, this is the way to fun. do it. Yeah. Brunch. So fun. Yeah. Thanks for doing it, Thanks, Craig. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate you being here. Dude, me too. Yeah, man. Me too. And Ehud. Ehud. That's a wrap, y'all. Good. Episode three, done and dusted. <laughs>